Hey gamers, welcome to something different. Now, my life is a lot more than just gaming. Though I have been gaming since the late 80s, 25 years to be exact, still, I'm a normal person just like you and I have a hobby too. As far as fun goes, my joy is collecting stuff. Things I collect vary from movies, anime, figurines, games, and yes, even vintage cartoon shows. Today, I want to share one of my passions with you and one of my favorite shows from when I was a little kid. So just sit back and relax as we head into the last frontier, outer space. In 2086, two peaceful aliens journeyed to Earth, seeking our help. In return, they gave us the plans for our first hyperdrive, allowing mankind to open the doors to the stars. We have assembled a team of unique individuals to protect Earth and our allies, courageous pioneers committed to the highest ideals of justice and dedicated to preserving law and order across the new frontier. These are the Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. Now, The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers is a sci-fi western animated series from 1986 which was very revolutionary for its time. The series had a more mature theme to it than many shows for its time. You would be surprised to see how many characters get killed off in this series. No going to sleep or being stunned like in Voltron or blown like in Robotech. No, you knew when the character was dead, like this guy. No way he's stunned. Still, this show had lots of violence, a good story, humor, and even some drama to boot. The premise for this show centers around a galaxy ranger named Zachary Fox and his family. During a trip into outer space, something happens to their hyperdrive, and while repairing their ship, they're attacked by space pirates. Zachary and his family are taken by the pirates to be sold as slaves for the queen. During his escape, Zach's son and daughter make it to safety, but his wife is captured. Also, Zach is mortally wounded. Back on planet Earth, he's turned into a half-human, half-machine and made leader of the new Galaxy Rangers, which is Earth's last hope to protect itself and also its allies in the depths of space. His main goal is actually to rescue his wife, whom the Queen has removed her soul and placed it in a Psycho Crystal. Unfortunately, this issue was never resolved for Zachary, and the series was not renewed. So that means Alexia is still under the Queen's control to this day. <laughs> Still, what happened to Zack had people captivated by the show and gave Fox the motivation he needed to become a hero. After Zack's surgery, his new powers included a burst of energy that releases from his hand that is capable of destroying pretty much anything in his way. Along with this, at times, it seems that he has super strength, too. This calls for some bionic enhanced strength. <laughs> Though they never really explain that. The other three rangers for the series are Nico, a woman with the ability to see into the past and the future as well as other magical abilities. Doc is given enhanced computer skills and there's nothing in the universe that the doctor can't operate or overcome at all. Lastly, we have the character Goose, who becomes the main character of the series later on and is basically a space clone of Clint Eastwood. Even the voice actor sounds like Clint. Arizona McGee, sensation dolls, spiders from Mars, now we're cooking. Hey pal, I ain't talking to you, so shut your face. Anyway, Goose is an expert marksman and fighter. He also has different powers that aren't really explained. His most used power is one that makes him nigh invulnerable from harm when he touches the star located on his chest. This gives him the nickname the Golden Goose. During the course of the series, we learn that Goose was a super trooper and isn't human, or maybe he was. But he has the ability to shapeshift into different aliens and learn new powers as he goes, though these can only be used for a limited time and it takes a lot out of him to change. He can also make his body as hard as steel too if he needs to. I'm not going to lie to you guys, Goose became my favorite character too. He was such a cool character and was so well developed and very well written. 
Plus, the stories they gave him show the many different aspects of his personality, his past, and his skills as a kickbutt ranger. As far as the show goes, the main villain is the Queen, but there are over 500 other characters, each one interacts with the rangers very differently, whether friend or foe. The rangers also police the entire galaxy, and in a western sense, they're kinda like US Marshals for the universe. One thing I remember differently about the show is the word kill was used a lot instead of destroy during the series. Something that for back then wasn't very common to hear in children's television. Galaxy Rangers was actually one of the first TV shows to use computer generated and CGI animation. Which trust me was pretty revolutionary for its time. Even after all these years the animation still looks amazing. Then again it was done by TMS Entertainment. Which is the same folks that brought us Akira and the Loop in the Third movies. Galaxy Rangers was created by Robert Mandel, whom got the idea from working with Tokyo Movie over Thunderbirds 2086. In fact, you'll notice that a lot of the ship designs tribute his love as a kid for the Thunderbirds series. Anyway, the 1980s saw a change in animation and marketing for kids. Cartoon shows, much as I'd like to ignore it, were nothing more than 22-minute toy commercials. Yeah, it's true, but hey, what can you do? It was still a heck of a lot better than today's cartoons because of the memorable characters, stellar action, great writing, and voice actors. Not to mention the music was pretty awesome. I mean, what other shows other than the 1980s had awesome theme introductions like this? What some people don't know about this show is that it was put together in less than one year. TMS had about eight months to animate the entire show, and the voice actors dubbed the voices after the animation, which was very common for later dubbing of anime. Also, they had very little time to do 65 episodes. Since it was a very different time back then to sell shows, the show was actually shown to actual TV stations and sold basically door to door, which is completely different than today because they just sell the idea to a network and then the network will release it on cable or the internet. How I ended up seeing this show was in syndication in 1988 through 1989 thanks to WPX 11 New York City. Personally, I love this show, but I do have some issues with it. For instance, as much as I love 80s glam metal most of the time, the music just doesn't really fit for this show. It just doesn't work with the western theme that's been established, but that's just me. Sometimes the humor can be a little bit too cheesy, and Doc feels more like a goofy sidekick than actual hero for me. I was afraid you'd say that, huh? <laughs> it's a shame that the series wasn't able to give him more of a backstory or flesh out his character because there was a lot more to the Doctor. The final issue I have with the show is the animation. Much like Batman the Animated Series later encountered this, Galaxy Rangers also had TMS using only three animation teams, A, B, and C team. The A team was used once in a while, but of course they did the intro and some of the more gripping episodes and space battles that you'll see. The B team wasn't bad, but you could see notable differences, and C animation team, well, yeah, not so good. Still better than a lot of the other 80 shows at the time, but you could see the change in animation from each episode, and that wasn't really good. That's why they didn't have the series in canon uh, when it was originally aired. The episodes were spaced out. Still, going how the show was very rushed, I'll let that one slide. Because none of this nitpicking really pulls down the series or makes it any more unenjoyable. This has to do in terms of how it looked and stood out amongst its peers in terms of both its presentation and overall package. Unlike other shows like Thundercats, Galaxy Rangers had a much longer story arc and Mandel didn't want to cash in and make a toy commercial series. In fact, he wanted to make a more mature cartoon which was very common for Japanese anime. While the series did last 65 episodes, the series wasn't renewed other than syndication of course, and the show sadly faded into obscurity. Except for the loyal fans that remembered the show. No one really knows what the cause of the Rangers downfall was either or if it was because the show was just too violent for its use of guns and Saturday Western show feel. No matter how it happened, in 1989 the Galaxy Rangers hung up their spurs and vanished into the sunset. Still, this is not the end of the Rangers. Over time, by 2004, like many other 80s shows, the Galaxy Rangers rode onto DVD as well. 
Four DVD volumes were released containing four episodes each, which was enough to renew people's love for the series. It wasn't until 2008 that the entire 65 episode series was made available in two collections. These DVDs were chock full of content and bonus features that fans could only dream of. Anyway, if you love great animated shows, 80s anime, or sci-fi stuff in general, make sure you give Galaxy Rangers a shot. This show definitely stands the test of time, and if you've never gotten the opportunity to see this show growing up, you'd be a no-good varmint now not to. After all, no guts, no glory. Until next time, cartoon fans. Oh!